With the Assassin's A-Team focusing their efforts into Unity on current-gen platforms, Assassin's Creed Rogue is one last hurrah of sailing, stabbing and free-running on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Hex, let us take to the seas once more. Aye aye, Captain. Stay my blade from the flesh of the innocent. Hide in plain sight. Never compromise the Assassin Brotherhood. These are the tenets of the Creed, the principles I used to live by. I was a young man then. I could not have imagined what the future had in store for me, nor the cost I would choose to bear. My name is Shay Patrick Cormac. In Assassin's Creed Rogue, you take the role of the charming young Irishman Shay Cormac. As a youthful recruit to the Assassin Brotherhood, Shay has a yearning for respect and a knack for getting into mischief. Admit it, I nearly had you. Yes, but he's not quite the arrogant swashbuckler that Edward Kenway was. Shay is a righteous man who strives to do the right thing, not caring which banner he's sailing under so long as he's allowed to pursue his altruistic goals. Rogue takes place between 1752 and 1761, spanning the Seven Years' War. As usual, the Assassins and Templars are at each other's throats, fighting for control of some ancient artefacts. When Shay is sent by the Assassins to find one of these relics, he discovers their true destructive nature. God had nothing to do with this. After confronting the Brotherhood and imploring them to change their ways, they turn him down. I mean, let's face it, they can be jerks sometimes. I will not let you destroy everything we have built! <laughs> Shay inevitably betrays the Creed, severing all ties, and quickly finds himself fighting alongside the Templar cause, setting out to stop the assassins in their misguided pursuit. Not let those outlaws have another victim. Good. I really liked Shay as a character, and not just because of his heart-melting accent and boyish charm. You genuinely empathise with him as he struggles with the internal conflict of killing his former comrades to defend what he believes to be right. Hope. I pray it's not you. There are a bunch of cool new characters, familiar faces, Adewale. and historical legends brought to life. Captain Shea Cormac, Captain James Cook. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Pleasure's mine, sir. Oh, he discovered our country, kind of. <laughs> yes, however, not all the characters are so well constructed. Uh, might I suggest we improve our vessel? The Morrigan is good, but with a few more supplies, she could be unstoppable. And yeah, there's a French outpost nearby I happen to know. That guy sounds like he belongs in a deodorant commercial, not sailing the North Atlantic. <laughs> yeah, it's an odd fit for the voice actor, isn't it? Speaking of the ocean, how nice was it to be back amongst the waves? The world is a pretty similar size to Black Flag. However, instead of one large map to explore, there are three smaller and more diverse locations. Each has been crafted with a nice amount of detail and they certainly feel unique. There are the lush woods of the Canadian Riverlands and the well-worn streets of New York. But the hero environment is definitely the North Atlantic, with its icebergs, narwhals, Careful with that horn! and water cold enough to kill you. They're all gorgeous locations, to be sure. To be sure, to be sure. Although I didn't quite embrace them as I did with Black Flag's Caribbean Isles. With those, you could almost feel the blistering heat of the sun and smell the sweat and salt in the air. Although that might have been just because I was playing it in the summer in a poorly ventilated room. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, though. There was just something so alluring about those crystal blue waters. Uh, it's a small price to pay for a lead in the precursor box. But Rogue still carries over those ship-faring mechanics that we know and love. Yeah, and the sea combat is as fun as ever. Your vessel, the Morrigan, is pretty well equipped from the get-go, so you don't have to spend as much time upgrading before taking to the enemy. Yeah, I think we can both agree, though, that the best returning feature of the sea shanties. Mm. Sing me hearties! And the worst returning feature is Abstergo HQ. You were just an anonymous. Animus, yes? Yes, once again, you are forced to endure the tedium of Abstergo's glossy halls. This time round, someone has uploaded a virus into the company's Animus systems. A file labeled Shea Cormac was booby trapped with some kind of virus. Your job is to prevent things like this. While this may sound like a lame plot device, it is. It genuinely is. Get a virus scanner, they're free now. Yeah, I can't really argue with that. Although, the virus does turn out to be a decent enough excuse for Shay to bounce through glitches in time. It only happens a few times, but it's used as a mechanic to tie Rogue to Unity. 
Got it. She's in Paris, all right. There are quite a few of those little crossover nods to Unity, which we are also playing at the moment. So much so that Rogue kind of feels like a big ad for Unity. Well, maybe a little bit, but Rogue still definitely stands strong on its own. <laughs> At about 8 to 10 hours, the campaign is a lot shorter than previous Assassin's games, but I actually think that works in its favour. There's much less faffing about with follow and eavesdropping quests. Yeah, they've really cut the fat, and it means the next exciting action sequence is always moments away. Not that I thought Black Flag overstayed its welcome, but it's just nice to have a, a streamlined Hollywood adventure this time. Yeah, I agree, but never fear completionists. There are collectibles and chores aplenty, which should take playtime to 20 plus hours. Fortune's favour. As expected, there's not a whole lot of new mechanics, but there are some interesting tweaks to the gameplay. Because you are working for the Templars, your assassin enemies are naturally far sneakier than we're used to, even going as far as using our own tricks against us. Cheeky assassins. Very cheeky. By using your eagle vision, you can reveal the location of these stealthy stabbers and get the jump on them. Before they do the same to you. Oh, feel my butt. It's a borrowed mechanic from the abandoned PvP mode of old, but it's a welcome addition to the single player combat. Yes, although I think you'll find the best addition to the combat is the grenade launcher. You can take on groups of enemies with sleep and berserk gases, or you can make a much less subtle approach. Very cool. What are you going to give it, Hex? I think Rogue is a commendable addition to the series and definitely worth checking out if you're still on older systems. Regardless, though, if you're a big Assassin's Creed fan, I also think it's worth dusting off your old console and jumping back on deck. I'm giving it eight and a half. Yeah, there is a lot to like here. I'm not sure if I could recommend it if you have moved on to next gen. And personally, while I appreciate the shorter length, I'm still a little fatigued by the old formula, and I'm looking forward to chatting about Unity's attempts to revitalize the series next week. So I'm giving Rogue 7.5 out of 10. And now here is Goose with the news. 